cramp. Incredibly painful, certainly debilitating, and potentially ride or race ruining. But is it avoidable? Well, firstly, I suppose, what actually is cramp? Very simply, it's when a muscle contracts and then fails to relax. It sounds straightforward, but actually no one really knows what causes it. No one knows categorically what is the reason that we suffer from muscle cramp. The best guess is that actually it's a combination of factors. So if you do all of the following, you can try and beat cramp. For many, many years, it was thought that dehydration caused cramp. Now, recent research has shown that isn't actually the case, but experience in the field shows that while dehydration may not be causal, the incidence of cramp certainly increase during hot weather. So rule number one is try to stay hydrated. Now, it doesn't mean downing bottle after bottle, thinking it's gonna solve your problem. You need to drink to thirst, and then make sure that you've always got fluid when you need it. Inextricably linked to hydration and sweating is salt, or more accurately, sodium, which is important for maintaining the sodium balance in your body, which is actually as critical to keeping you alive as regulating your core body temperature. Now, the more that you sweat, the more sodium that you will lose. But here's the thing. If you only drink water and you don't take on enough sodium, then you could actually end up diluting your sodium balance. It's that this that many people feel is one of the causes of cramp. And it's not hard to see why, because sodium is an incredibly important part of muscle signaling. So correct neural transmittance for nerve function, muscle function, and heart function. So you can see why it is incredibly important. But how do you get more sodium on board then? Well, the easiest and nicest thing to do is to actually use an electrolyte drink or you can use a carb drink with electrolytes to do two things at once. Then food, of course, has loads of sodium in, and then you can indeed get energy gels that also have electrolytes. So you don't have to just eat table salt. As I mentioned, the incidence of cramp does seem to be higher in hot weather and particularly hot weather that's been preceded by periods of cooler weather. And that is because a rider that isn't acclimatised to heat actually has much higher concentration of electrolytes in their sweat. So they sweat more sodium out, hence the higher incidence of cramp. Unfortunately, many of us have to train in conditions that are very different from those that we race in, particularly if we're going to be travelling to an event, for example. So in addition to drinking electrolytes, is there anything else that we can do? Well, yes. Riders that live in cooler climates have been preparing for hot races using this for many, many years. It's very simple. You supplement your current training with some light riding on an indoor trainer, but in a room that's warm enough so that you get a real sweat on. Now, you don't want to push it too far here. I'm not advocating you give yourself heat stroke, but getting a sweat on for an hour a day for five days on the trot just before you travel to an event could be really, really critical. Fatigue also plays a big part here. It always seems to be when you're really tired and you're going really deep that cramp starts to set in. And that's because we think that as your muscles fatigue, so too does your neuromuscular system. And very simply, as your nerves get tired, they stop working properly. So training is going to play a key role here. Being bed prepared for your chosen event is going to help ward off that dreaded cramp. But there is an issue, isn't there? Because actually replicating the demands of a super tough race or a really long Grand Fondo can actually be quite hard. And the best way we prepare now is to combine different aspects of an event and hopefully put it all together in time for the big day. It's simply not feasible to always train for six hours in the mountains as hard as you can. So what could be a good idea instead is to pick an event that's three weeks before your chosen event and then use that as your last opportunity to go really deep and tick that final box of preparation. And after all, if you cramp in your dummy event three weeks out, you're less likely to cramp in the real thing. 
Now the final point, and one unfortunately you can't do anything about, although it may at least make you feel less perplexed about the issue of cramp, and that is genetics. Because it seems from research as if some people are actually just genetically more predisposed to cramping than others. And unfortunately, again, there doesn't seem to be a really clear reason why, but it may at least go some way to explaining the reason that you're suffering from cramp and your mate isn't, no matter what you do. Four things then to help you avoid cramp. And one thing that will give you a very good excuse if you ever do. Make sure you try to stay hydrated, drink electrolytes to maintain your sodium balance, heat acclimatise and do a dummy event to make sure you go really deep before you need to. Now of course this isn't just about riding in hot weather but if you need tips on that very subject then we've got a video for you. You can get through to it just by clicking up there. Or for some tips on how to race in the heat from the pros at the Tour of California, click just down there. Otherwise make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that just click on the globe.